Hey, I'm Matt Wells. You're watching Juno TV. This is the Vault Sessions, and we're here with Afi from Bahamas. How's it going? Real good. Good to meet you. Yes, likewise. Well, we just met. Yeah. Good to see you. That was for show. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Hey, I want to ask you about um, the. F I think I read that the first album, it might have been a cassette that you ever bought or owned, was a Run DMC cassette. That's, tr that's true. Is that correct? That's correct. How old were you, and where were you living? Like, where, where were you growing up at that time? I was living at, uh, I was actually living on Young Street, but it was 100 kilometers from here, believe it or not. Young Street, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, if you know this, but it's the longest street in the world. And it runs all the way up to Barrie, Ontario, which is where I grew up. And once you get up there, they call it Burton Avenue, and I grew up at one, 117. And uh, yeah, I saved up my own money. I had a paper route with the Barrie Advance. Uh, not a very reputable news organization, but... It was a wonderful delivery vehicle for all the flyers and everything, you know. You did your collections, you went out and got your money? That's right. And, uh, yeah, so I was quite diligent about the papers and I'd get about 40 bucks a month. And, uh, yeah, I bought, I bought Raising Hell by Run DMC. So were you, were you way into hip-hop at that age? Uh, yeah, I think like most suburban white kids were way into hip-hop. It's still that way. <laughs> did I hear you talk about um, uh, one time that... Maybe when you were in Barry and you were, start, you were starting to get into music, you, you, were li you liked East Coast bands. And I, and I, mm -hmm. I wanted to know if it was that East Coast Canada bands. Were you yeah, about? absolutely. So like Halifax bands, Thrush Hermit, that's that. Yeah, band. absolutely. All, all Super Friends, Thrush Hermit. I mean, Sloan guys having their own label. And that, that um, there's a gang mentality mm -hmm. at that time. And, and I think a lot of my friends, you know, growing up in Barry, we've all since moved to Toronto. That was very inspiring for us, you know. And um, and getting a chance to see those bands play, you know, in in the '90s, I think that was, uh, yeah, it's really really inspiring, you know. I mean, that's uh, indie music, you know, whatever whatever that means now. Before I we we needed to come up with a reason or, or a definition. Yeah, that, I, I think guess. it's it's a little slightly more complicated now, but at the time, I mean, those guys were literally phoning up the record plants saying, "I want to make my own album," and and then going out on tour, and I, you know, that when I was 16, I was quite moved by that. What about now? You know, a lot of times people will, will ask an artist, you know, is there an artist or or that you emulate or a musician you think is really great and you'd like to be like? And I'm always curious to know, in terms of a career or longevity, are there are there artists that you know or that you aspire to look at the career and how they've handled their their career in music that you look to and say, I like how they've done it. Jeez, I don't know. I mean, yeah, sure. I, I think there's little things from all kinds of different careers, but uh, I don't think there's one person that I would necessarily want, you know, or, or covet what their position mm -hmm. or something, you know. Um, I, I, I have no idea. There seems to be no formula, you know. I think that the business tries to make every artist go through very similar channels, you know, as far as putting out records and promoting them and stuff like that. But um, it seems to me that the ones that stay are the ones that sort of break away from that at some point and, and incorporate their own ideas into not just producing music but, but how it's put out into the world and I think that the, the way that um, music is consumed now really dictates that artists sort of have a, a better grasp of, of that part of it, you know. You could just release your albums on Craigslist. Well, I've tried that. I sold three copies. Is that okay? Did you really sell three copies? I did. And, and was there uh, any haggling? My wife loves Craig Craigslist, right? Sure. We sell all our kids' stuff when they're done. We're like, we're yeah. selling Craigslist. Yeah. And she loves haggling with them, and it drives me nuts. Really? But how, like, did you... Why don't you just let her have that? I, I, do, I, do, I do. Listen, I do. I'm just like, sometimes... When you guys are old and gray... <laughs> we'll have that. You're not going to be sitting there thinking like, you know what? I wish I hadn't have spent all that time on Craigslist. No. You're going to be thinking about something else, I'm sure. So did you ha was there any haggling, or is it just like... Uh, th I mean, that's part of it. I, th I think that's, <laughs> personally, I think that's the fun part of it, you know? I think people are like, oh, I can get this on eBay. I can get it at a better price. And so that's when you say, well, go ahead. Go get it on eBay. And then I was in a position where I knew that this thing was only available. You know, I, I literally only had three copies. I'd sort of gotten some advanced copies from the label. And, uh, yeah, it was just something fun that I could do, you know? And, and I can... There's something really, obviously, just tangible about it. I, I said, okay, I'll meet you in the park by the baseball diamond. 
and I stood there with my own album in my jacket and then the woman approached and she I said you got the 20 bucks and you know we did an exchange and it's just fun I just got to meet people and you know that's out of my ordinary sort of uh, way of putting out albums so anything that's out of the ordinary I kind of enjoy you know so was it a success I think so. I, from what I hear, the people on the internet went crazy about it, and it, I think it's revolutionizing the industry. <laughs> Thanks for the chat. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's Afi from Bahamas. I'm here with my pal Matt. And guess what? You're watching Juno TV. When you, you get through Whatever it is you've been up to I'll still be, still be he that drew you in if they should ever say all you loved it was getting my way, I'll defend you.